Home Health Aid, Unit 3, Personal Care Services Statement of Purpose The purpose of this unit is to provide the CNA with expanded knowledge of safety and personal care as it is developed in the home. Personal care skills, body mechanics, safety and emergency procedures are reviewed, and methods to improvise and adapt these procedures for the home care client are presented. Performance Standards Objectives Upon completion of the five theory hours and 15 clinical hours plus assignments, the learner will be able to Define the terminology Describe the steps and guidelines for common personal care skills Explain the importance of improvising equipment and adapting care activities in the home Discuss personal care delivery in home care List examples of home equipment that can be utilized to provide personal care Discuss the benefits of self-care in prompting wellness. Describe key principles of body mechanics. Explain how to adapt body mechanics in the home setting. Describe adaptations that can be made in the home for ambulation and positioning. And identify the purpose of passive and active range of motion exercises. They will also be able to describe high risk factors for skin breakdown and methods of prevention. Describe stages of pressure ulcers, decubitus ulcers, and report observations. List types of ostomies and describe how to empty and change the pouch. Recognize emergencies in the home and define critical steps to follow. Relate the chain of infection to the home care setting. Describe the infection control measures to use in the home care setting. Describe the role and responsibilities of the home health aide in assisting the client to self-administer medications. Terminology Learner Activities or Assignments Class Discussion Discuss how personal care skills would be adapted in the home setting. Activity Have groups of students compete to list principles of body mechanics. Activity Body Mechanics Individual or group problem solving given scenario. Activity Students practice improvising equipment for ambulation and positioning. Activity Students sit on a hand for five minutes to experience effects of pressure. Activity. Skin care. Individuals or the group problem solving given scenario. Activity. Falls. Individual or group problem solving given scenario. Crosswords. Infection control. Activity. Infection control. Individual or group problem solving given scenario. AIDS skit. Optional. See appendix figure two. Teaching Strategies Lecture Small and Large Group Discussion Handouts Supply Kit Hepatitis Medications Manual Skill Demonstrations Empty Ostomy Pouch Sits Bath Warm Foot Soak AIDS Skit References Content Outline Section 1 The Terminology Terminology Continued Section 2 The Steps and Guidelines for Common Personal Care Skills Review Body Mechanics, Transfers, Ambulation, Positioning NATAP or DHS Module 5. Review Comfort and Adaptive Devices, Range of Motion, NATAP or DHS Module 14. Hand Washing and Universal Precautions, NATAP or DHS Module 6. Care Skills, NATAP or DHS Module 8. TPR, BP, 
NATAP or DHS Module 10. Specimens, bed care, bandages, lotions, NATAP or DHS Module 9. Personal care skills for the nurse assistant. Universal precautions. Hand washing. TPR and blood pressure. Weight. Shampoo. Bed bath, tub, shower. Perianal care. Skin care. Back rub. Oral hygiene. Dentures. Shave. Unoccupied and occupied bed. Comb and brush hair. Dressing and undressing, nail care, TED hose, toileting and elimination, catheter care, emptying catheter bag, specimen collection, colostomy care, apply non-sterile, clean, dry dressing, body mechanics, transfers, range of motion, ambulation, positioning, apply prosthetics. Additional personal care skills found in the home. Sits bath. Used for discomfort from hemorrhoids and other rectal or perineal conditions. See manual skill sits bath. Foot soak. To soften calluses and nails. To clean and soften skin. See manual skill foot soak. Section 3. The importance of improvising equipment and adapting care activities in the home. Improvising equipment and adapting care activities. Home equipment setting versus facility equipment setting. Resources and staff in the home setting versus resources and staff in the facilities. Planning ahead for adaptations. Handout supply kit. Section 4. Personal care delivery in home care. Personal care in home. Plan ahead. Protect modesty during personal care. Use universal precautions. Maintain privacy issues and modify them. Adapt equipment as necessary. Consider the client's home schedule. Encourage wellness versus illness role. Dress in street clothes. Encourage self-care. Activities of daily living priorities. Bath and shower. Oral care. Shave. Hair care. Dress. Shampoo as needed. Use a special shampoo tray if necessary. And nail care. Cleanup and storage equipment. Section 5. Examples of home equipment that can be utilized to provide personal care. Items that can be adapted for use in home care. Gloves. There are no alternative to gloves. Bed bathing equipment. You can use bowls, pots, pans, buckets, paper towels, washcloths, etc. Swabs for oral care. Soft washcloth, padded tongue blades, cotton swabs, etc. Bedpans for incontinence. Plastic bags, spare sheets, shower curtains, towels, sanitary pads, etc. Shampoo tray. You could use a plastic bag, bucket, milk jug, towel, or dry shampoo. Urinal. Sheets, towels, jars, or a coffee can. Section 5. The Benefits of Self-Care in Promoting Wellness A. Components of Wellness Physical Function Emotional or Psychosocial and Spiritual B. Benefits of Self-Care Improved Physical Strength and Functionality Improved Self-Esteem Increased Speed of Recovery C. Activity Graded Activities ADLs Movement or Exercise Social interaction. Adaptations. D. Working with the family. Explanation of benefits and instructions on appropriate helping. E. The difference between recuperative and terminal illness. Recuperative needs encouragement and instruction. Terminal illnesses require you to offer opportunities and provide comfort care. Section 7. Key Principles of Body Mechanics. Refer to Body Mechanics, NATAP or DHS Module 5. Review key principles of body mechanics. Use as many muscles as possible. Good alignment and posture. Keep your back straight, knees bent, weight even between the feet, 12 inches apart and one slightly ahead of the other. 
Keep the load close when lifting and lift smoothly. It's better to push, pull, or roll than lift. Let legs do the work and the arms support. Face your work area. Avoid twisting at the waist. Always turn or pivot completely around. Work as a team with the family or others. One person as the leader. Section 8. How to adapt body mechanics in the home setting. Review the rules for client transfers in ATAP or DHS Module 5. Principles of body mechanics do not change when working in the client's home. Benefits of self-care. Kneel down rather than bending when the client has a bed that does not rise to working height. Kneel when cleaning low objects. When giving personal care to a client in a low bed, it may be better to kneel, sit on the side of the bed, or sit on a chair at the side of the bed. Make sure that the client is positioned close to the side of the bed from which the home health aid is working. Slide furniture rather than lifting it. Use a wheeled device to move any heavy or awkward objects. For transfers, apply the principles of body mechanics. Lock the client's knees. Rules and critical steps. Prepare the client for transfer, footwear. Encourage client to assist in transfer. Use assistive devices or assistance from others who are capable. Equipment for transfers. A sliding or transfer board. You could use an ironing board or cutting board. And mechanical lifts. Review mechanical lifts, NATAP or DHS, Module 5, Manual Skill. Consideration for adaptations. Home furniture at different heights, such as a bed to chair. Bathroom. Working in small areas and safety factors. Section 9. Adaptations that can be made in the home for safe ambulation and positioning. Ambulation. Home hazards and limitations. Furniture. Clutter. Narrow hallways. Equipment and pets. Safety of equipment. Home adaptation. Ramps. Rails. Skid-proof strips for rugs and tubs. Positioning. Home adaptation for positioning. Improvise a draw sheet. Towels. Washcloths. Sheets. Blankets. Foam. Paper towel holders. Section 10. The purpose of passive and active range of motion exercises. Passive prevents deterioration of joint function from disuse or immobility. The home health aid should support the extremity and move the joint through the range of motion. Active is preventative and restorative activity of joint function. Home health aid assists the client in putting each joint through its full range of motion. The home health aid may be asked to carry out specific range of motion activities as established by a physical or occupational therapist. Section 11. High risk factors for skin breakdown and methods of prevention. Anatomy and function of the skin. The epidermis is the top layer of skin, dead tissue which has no blood supply. It serves to protect and reduce fluid loss. The dermis. The moist layers that contain nerve endings, the blood supply, hair follicles, sweat glands. It's the layer for senses of pain, pressure, and temperature. Subcutaneous. The tissues that lie below skin, including fat, muscle, bone, and a layer of thermal insulation. B. Causes of skin breakdown, high risk factors. Immobility or decreased mobility. Dehydration or poor nutrition. Incontinence. Diapers and attends. Briefs. Moisture. Poor circulation. Pressure and or friction. Prevention. Gentle handling. Turn and reposition frequently. Decrease pressure. Use techniques to improve circulation. Increase physical activity. Keep the skin clean and dry. Adaptive equipment alternating mattresses. Prevent dry skin. Section 12. Stages of pressure ulcers, or decubitus, and report observations. Stages of pressure ulcers, or decubitus ulcers. Stage 1. Persistent arrhythmia, redness. Stage 2. Superficial skin breakdown, a blister or a crack. 
Stage 3. Skin breakdown through the dermis. Can have necrotic tissue. Stage 4. Deep skin breakdown to fat, muscle, or bone. B. Describe and report changes in skin condition. Size. The approximate size of any redness or open area. The location. And any presence of drainage. C. Wound care. The home health aid's responsibilities. Observe the condition of dressings. Apply a moisture barrier as ordered. Report to your supervisor on condition of dressing. The home health aide may change a non-elastic bandage or non-sterile dry dressing at the direction of the RN or MD. The home health aide does not remove or change sterile dressings. The home health aide does not apply medications. The home health aide may apply a non-legend topical ointment to unbroken, irritated skin surfaces, such as a diaper rash. Section 13. Types of ostomies and how to empty and change the pouch. A brief review, anatomy and function of the bowel. Small bowel, or the ileum, is about 20 feet long. It absorbs all nutrients and reabsorbs about 8,000 cc's of gastric fluids. The large bowel, or colon, is about 6 to 8 feet long and absorbs the last of the water and forms waste. The genitourinary tract includes the kidneys, ureters, bladder, and urethra. These form and eliminate urine. Common types of ostomies. Ileostomy. It's on the lower ileum. Has liquid or semi-liquid drainage continuously. The pouch may need to be emptied every two to three hours. The drainage will contain gastric juices and can cause major skin problems. Colostomy is on the ascending or transverse colon, will have soft stool throughout the day. On the descending or sigmoid colon, will have formed stool and may be regulated to once a day. Urostomy replaces the bladder to drain ureters. Urine is produced continuously. You must protect the skin and empty the pouch frequently. Care of ostomy. Types of pouches. How to empty pouches. How to rinse pouch and reapply. Peri bottle or turkey baster. Check the wafer or stoma adhesive and report any leakage. Document the output and condition of the appliance. See Manual Skill Emptying an Ostomy Pouch, page 66. Section 14 Emergencies in the Home and Critical Steps to Follow. Emergencies in the home are situations requiring immediate action to prevent injury, disability, or death. Steps to follow. Follow agency policies. The agency will have policies and procedures for common emergencies. Assess the situation. You need information for proper intervention. Call 911 for help. You may need assistance. Common situations. Falls. This is a very common occurrence in the home. Intervention. Assess the patient and the situation. Check their airway, breathing, circulation the ABCs of CPR. Note any obvious injuries. Assess pain. Get help. Utilize agency procedure. Keep the client still. Do not move them until help arrives. Bleeding. A little bit can look like a lot. Intervention. Apply direct pressure to the bleeding area with a clean, thick cloth. Do not remove any existing bandages. Get help. Utilize agency procedures. Shock. This can occur in a number of situations, such as pain, injury, or myocardial infarction. Signs and symptoms. Pale, restless, anxious, weak, cool skin, clammy skin, diaphoresis, NV, a change in level of consciousness. Intervention. Keep the patient quiet and warm. Elevate their lower extremities. Watch ABCs and get help following your agency's procedures. Burns. Tissue damage due to heat from fire, electrical, chemical, sun, or steam. The seriousness varies due to depth, site, size, client's age, and condition. Intervention. Apply a cool, clean, moist dressing. Do not remove any material if it is sticking. Do not apply ice directly to the skin. If the skin is blistered or broken, it should be seen by a physician. 
Seizures. Signs and symptoms. Involuntary movement, jerking or rigidity, drooling. Intervention. Protect the client from injury from objects in the environment. Do not try to put anything in the client's mouth during the seizure. Check their airway. Turn the client on their side after the seizures have subsided. Allow the client to rest after the seizure. <sighs> Respiratory arrest. Signs and symptoms. Unconscious. Pulse present but no respirations. Intervention. Perform breaths as described for CPR. Get help immediately. Notify emergency response, 911. Cardiac arrest. Signs and symptoms. Unconscious, no pulse or respirations. Intervention. Perform CPR. Get help immediately. Notify emergency response, 911. Obstructed airway. Signs and symptoms. Respiratory difficulty. Inability to speak or cough. Universal choking sign. Intervention. The Heimlich maneuver. Diabetic emergencies. The most common are either low blood sugar or high blood sugar. Signs and symptoms of high blood sugar. Flushed face, lethargy, a fruity breath odor, hot, dry skin. Signs and symptoms of low blood sugar. A clammy skin, pallor, irritability, trembling, mental confusion. Interventions. For low blood sugar, fruit juice or sugar can be given to the conscious client. For high blood sugar or an unconscious client, notify the agency and utilize agency procedures. Refer to Emergency Procedures NATAP or DHS Module 12. Section 15. The Chain of Infection to the Home Care Setting. Review Medical and Surgical Asepsis, NATAP or DHS Module 6. Transmission Reservoirs in the Home Setting. Other Household Members. Direct Contact or Droplet. Care providers and visitors, direct contact or droplet. Insects, vector. Pets, vector. Section 16. Infection control measures to use in the home care settings. Review universal precautions, an ATAP or DHS, Module 6. Methods of disinfection in the home, according to agency policy. Hand washing is important. The use of soap and water. To clean surfaces. Disinfection agents include bleach, alcohol, povidone or betadine. Disposal of hazardous waste. Follow agency policy. Bagging, sharps container or bottle. Unit 5 Home Health Aid Curriculum has additional information. Section 17. The role and responsibilities of the home health aid in assisting the client to self-administer medications. Legal. The home health aid cannot pour medications or administer medications. Medications must be prepared by the client, family, licensed nurse, or physician. The patient must take the medications themselves. Handout Medications, pages 70 and 71. Manual Skill Sits Bath Equipment Disposable Sits Bath Bathtub Towels Hot Water and a Blanket Criteria Assemble the equipment. Wash hands. Explain the procedure to the client. Assure them of privacy. Set up a disposable kit according to the manufacturer's instructions. If using a tub, fill the tub with approximately 6 inches of water at 95 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Place a folded towel in the hollow of the tub. Help the client sit in the sits bath. Keep their upper body warm using a blanket if necessary. Check the water temperature every 5 minutes, replenishing warm water as necessary. Have the client remain in the sits bath for 10 to 20 minutes or as ordered. Help the client out of the sits bath and assist them with drying off with a towel and dressing. Clean and store equipment. Wash hands and document. Manual skill. Warm foot soak. Equipment needed. A basin. Towel. Clean socks and shoes, newspaper or plastic sheet, a bucket or large container of warm water, 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Criteria Assemble equipment. Seat client in a chair. Place newspaper or plastic sheet on floor in front of chair and under client's feet. Place the basin on newspaper or plastic sheet in front of the chair and client. 
Fill the basin approximately full of warm water. Place client's feet in the basin. Add or replenish water to achieve level to cover the feet without overflowing and maintain temperature. Discontinue treatment within 15 to 20 minutes. Remove the client's feet one at a time, drying each as it is removed, especially between the toes, and inspect each foot for any skin irritation. If the feet appear to have dry skin, apply lotion and rub in well. Put clean socks and shoes on the client's feet. Remove the basin and supplies. Clean and store the equipment. And disposed of any used newspaper. Document the task and any unusual observations. Handout Supply Kit A nice item to have for home emergencies and as a backup for home care when needed. Baby wipes, paper towels, spare gloves, scissors, orange sticks, emery boards, gauze dressings, 2x2 two two or 4x4, four four. a bottle of H2O, 1 quart, alcohol or betadine swabs, safety pins, plastic bags large and small, a roll of tape, sugar source for clients with diabetes mellitus, lotion or powder but no perfumes or alcohol, soap, a one-way valve mask, and tongue blades. Activity Body Mechanics Instructions Review the following scenario and write responses to the following questions. A group discussion will follow. Your instructor will guide you through the legal and ethical issues involved. You are the home health aide assigned to work with Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown is 6 foot 2 and weighs 225 pounds. He has recently had a CVA with right hemiplegia. The nurse informed you that it is very important that Mr. Brown sit up in the chair every day. After working with Mr. Brown, you think that getting Mr. Brown into a chair will require two people. Mrs. Brown and her teenage son are in the home. Mr. Brown prefers to sit in his recliner. Critical Thinking Questions What do you think are important data, information, observations in this situation? What additional information would be helpful to have? What do you think is the problem or problems in this situation? Which of these problems would be your priority? What would be most important to do first? What action or activities could you implement to improve or correct the situation or problems? What might be the results of your actions or activities? Activity Skin Care Instructions Review the following scenario and give a written response to the questions. Group discussion will follow, and your instructor will guide you through the legal and ethical issues. Mr. Smith is caring for his 86-year-old wife. Mrs. Smith is your last client of the day, Saturday at 3 p.m. While giving Mrs. Smith a bath, you notice that her peri area is red and tender. Mr. Smith states that for the last 48 hours, Mrs. Smith has had no control of her urine and at times of her stool. He states that he cannot keep her bed dry. Critical Thinking Questions What do you think are important data, information, observations in this situation? What additional information would be helpful to have? What do you think is the problem or problems in this situation? Which of these problems would be your priority? What would be most important to do first? What action or activities could you implement to improve or correct the situation or problems? What might be the results of your actions or activities? Manual skill, emptying an ostomy pouch. Equipment, drainable ostomy pouch or urostomy pouch with valve. Clamp if drainable. Peri bottle or glass or turkey baster. Gloves, toilet paper or paper towel. Graduate and protective drape. Criteria. Gather equipment. Explain process to the client. Ensure client privacy. Wash hands. Apply gloves. Position protective drape. Empty pouch according to procedure for specific type of appliance. Measure the output. Cleanse the pouch according to procedure for specific type of appliance. Ensure closure of the pouch. Clean the equipment. Remove your gloves. Wash hands and document procedure. Activity Falls Review the following scenario and write responses to the following questions. A group discussion will follow. 
Your instructor will guide you through the legal and ethical issues involved. Scenario Miss Penny lives by herself in a small, older home with seven stairs. The home has vinyl floors and many throw rugs. The living room is dark and crowded with stacks of old magazines. Miss Penny has fallen twice in the last four months, once in the house and once on the stairs. Currently, she is recovering from a broken hip. Critical thinking questions. What do you think are important data, information, observations in this situation? What additional information would be helpful to have? What do you think is the problem or problems in this situation? Which of these problems would be your priority? What would be most important to do first? What action or activities could you implement to improve or correct the situation or problems? What might be the results of your actions or activities? Learning activity, crossword puzzle, infection control. Across one, small living things that cannot be seen without a microscope. Across four, what is the number one best method of medical asepsis? Across eight, direct contact, air, food, and insects are some methods of what? Across ten, what is the process by which all microorganisms are destroyed? Across 11. A. What is a microorganism that is harmful and causes infection or disease? Across 12. What includes one always wearing gloves when in contact with body secretions? Down 2. The first line of defense against infection is our... Down 3. Warmth, moisture a food source, and O2, are needs for microorganisms, what? Down 5. The absence of pathogens is... Down 6. What means free from pathogenic organisms, but not sterile? Down 7. Undergone a chemical or physical process by which microorganisms are slowed or killed. Down 9. When an item is exposed to microorganisms, it is considered to be what? Learning Activity Crossword Answers Word List for Crossword Home Health Aid Asepsis Clean Contaminated Disinfected Growth Hand Washing Microorganisms Pathogen Skin Sterilization Transmission Universal Precautions Handout Hepatitis. Please study the handout table on the right side of this slide. Activity Infection Control. Review the following scenario and write responses to the following questions. A group discussion will follow. Your instructor will guide you through the legal and ethical issues involved. Your agency contacts you to go out to the Joneses' home. Mr. Jones is a 32-year-old AIDS client who is living in his parents' home. Upon arrival, you find Mr. Jones's mother providing bowel care after Mr. Jones had used the bedside commode. She is not wearing gloves. You note that the bedside commode contains a large amount of liquid stool that appears to have blood in it. The mother states that Mr. Jones has a raw, sore bottom from so much diarrhea. She says that the diarrhea occurs with such urgency that it gets on the sheets and vinyl floor. Critical thinking questions. What do you think are important data, information, observations in this situation? What additional information would be helpful to have? What do you think is the problem or problems in this situation? Which of these problems would be your priority? What would be most important to do first? What action or activities could you implement to improve or correct the situation or problems? What might be the results of your actions or activities? Handout Medications Common Features of Medications Medications can benefit the client. Medications have the potential for harm to the client. Medications have a limit to the amount that is safe for use. Medications have a generic name. This includes the names of the active ingredients, such as acetaminophen. Medications also have a brand name. This is usually the manufacturer's name for the drug, such as Tylenol. 
Medications have the possibility of becoming weaker under certain conditions, such as when not taken as directed, when stored for a long period of time, or when stored incorrectly. There can be a risk when taking combinations of medications or taking them in combination with food or alcohol. 2. The Effects of Medications Medications or drugs are chemical substances. They are used to treat diseases. There are many different types to treat different diseases. Drugs can be given for infections or pain or to help a body system improve functioning. Serious health conditions can arise from the use of specific medications, from using two or more drugs within the same time period, or from attempts of self-treatment without the advice of a physician. The client and the family should know what effects any medication used is expected to have and to know why symptoms or side effects might indicate an allergy or other dangerous situation. 3. Safety Factors Encourage the client and or family to keep all medications out of reach of anyone who might misuse them. If there are older people who are not responsible for their actions, or if there are children in the home, it is best to keep medications in a locked cabinet or in bottles with a safety lid. This includes aspirin, vitamins, and iron tablets, which if taken in quantity by a child could be fatal. Your client may be used to finding the medication in a certain place within the medicine cabinet or storage area. Do not move the medications without permission. Encourage the client and the family to use labeled containers or a medication reminder system, such as a Mediset, set up by a professional. 4. Assisting the client to self-administer medications. Home health aides do not administer medications. This is the responsibility of the licensed nurse, client, family, or doctor. The licensed nurse, family, or physician will make out the medication schedule for the client to follow. The home health aide will not give medication, but will observe whether the client takes the medication and should report any problems related to the administration of medication. When someone is taking medication, be certain that they have their glasses on and proper light so that the medication can be seen clearly. Remind the client to wash his or her hands. Assist the client to self-administer oral medications as necessary. Support the client's hand if necessary as he or she pours the medication into a spoon, cup, or hand. Hand the client a glass of water. Check to see that the client has swallowed the medication. Assist the client to self-administer eye medications as necessary. Position the client so that their head is tilted back. Support the client's hand as he or she drops the medication into the lower eyelid. Assist the client to self-administer topical medications, such as ointment, lotions, if necessary. The home health aide may only apply a non-legend topical ointment to unbroken, irritated skin surfaces. Remind the client to wash their hands before and after application. Assist the client to self-administer a rectal suppository as necessary. Assist the client to unwrap the suppository. Give the client disposable gloves to put on. Assist the client to a side-lying position. Guide the client's hand to the rectal area. Help hold the buttocks together for a few minutes while the suppository is absorbed. Help the client assume a comfortable position. Note, the only rectal suppository that the home health aide may administer to a client is a laxative suppository. Help the client with hand washing. Notify your supervisor if the client tells you that he or she will not take medications.